Junior speech topic was a humorous look at the history of railroading in Ohio. My topic was the English sense of humor. Mine was about the mafia and I have no idea why I picked the mafia. Bagels. My speech is about um, the argument nature versus nurture. Being mixed race and how I've had to deal with that growing up. I would say that the, the the variety of topics is about as wide as the topics in our society are. Um, we have had students talk about suicide, divorce, death, loss, sports, trips, scuba diving, uh, you, you name it, uh, kids have talked about it probably. You start the junior speech process by having the entire world in front of you and to try to narrow it down to something that is a three to eight minute or five to seven minute, I can't remember exactly, but I couldn't do that. Well, I was freaking out a little bit when I didn't have anything written and I would like go to bed and like not be able to fall asleep because I would be like, what am I gonna write about? But now that I have something written, it's a little bit easier to like see where I'm going. I remember at first I wrote one speech and then I had someone read it and we both decided I should probably write completely different speech, so I did. Which is, which is the process, as I gather from most people. You end up writing at least two, probably closer to three or four speeches before you give the speech. They think about it and think about it and think about it, which is what they've done since they first heard about it. And I don't think until they really do some actual writing in the summer um, that they can do real thinking. Uh, I, for one, encourage students to to tell their truths about their lives so that others know that there are students that have had deaths in their families, or students that have been through uh, divorces in their marriages, or students that are struggling with uh, eating disorders and the realities of, of their lives. And so therefore, they're not alone if they're struggling. And not all the topics are that, but they can also be funny. They can do anything that fits their personality. Weight. But to be fair, the most powerful emotions, love, hate, pain and passion are what make us human. I think in the old days, at the old school when junior speeches, or they were chapel speeches at that point because they took place in the chapel, they were more like history papers. They were more along the lines of reports. Uh, students would look up something, would learn about something, and would present a paper. Uh, little by little, uh, the junior speech program evolved into just that, a speech. In the, in, when I started in the 60s with uh, the late Larry Pike, there was an actual class called Junior Speaking. The, the speaking class itself, it was more than just the speech, it was an entire class, it was a whole year class where you met and you know you, read, you went around to, you gave other presentations um, just to show you the change in the times. We used to go, we were assigned to go and make Bible readings. So you pick scripture and of course as juniors everybody went for the most uh, salacious type of uh, Bible readings that they could find. Back then, the speeches, as opposed to today, where the speeches were much more, are much more personal. Increasingly, the, the speeches are, a greater number of them are about 
the kids sharing something personal about themselves. And if you think about what's happened culturally with these guys, it makes sense. Their life is Facebook and Twitter and reality TV shows. I realized how pointless substance abuse is and that sex is meaningless outside of a loving marriage. Number one, I think it is a challenge as a young person to get up there and speak with that many, speak in front of that many people. I, I, I think that as an exercise, as an educative exercise, um, it is a, um, it's a pretty, pretty daunting task for a young person. It was really challenging because you really had to do everything yourself, which was good. And it was terrifying, but in a good way. I mean, it was, it, at the end of the day, it, it is what it is and you just have to do it. I remember it was a lot of work. I remember we spent a ton of time and it was like a huge deal. I remember everybody, um, we would all call each other on the phone and do our junior speeches over the phone and stuff like that. She never learned how to cook. Now that sounds a whole lot more authentic when you do it like that, as though a person is talking to a bunch of people about some things that she's been thinking about. Usually by the time they, they come in to meet with me, there's some refinement. They've, they've thought about it, we've gone back and forth uh, electronically, and uh, so they've, there's, some, there's some work that's done before they ever get into the theater and begin to re rehearse. I'm just being honest with you. Yeah. So you really have to think about what do you want to have happen up there on Thursday? And then that's what happens. Uh, I think you can do better than that. The day of speeches is quite an interesting day. I was extremely nervous to give it, you know, because I was scared of the reception. Oh, I was really nervous in the chair. I was trying to kind of just focus on the two speeches ahead of mine. And I remember holding my hand like this and saying, putting it down, and then I'd have to move my paper with my left hand so it wouldn't shake. It was starting to get kind of scary when you went backstage and then you could hear everyone coming into the theater. And it was I just remember sitting backstage. I even remember what I wore. I remember everything. I remember the audience looking really dark and the bright light shining down on me. I wasn't really able to see any of the audience besides those who were sitting on the front row because the room was pretty dark and the spotlight is kind of on the stage. I just remember after that moment, it was like, okay, I can breathe now. You know, the, the scary part, the initial part is over and I can just get up there and deliver it, and I, I didn't miss a beat. For the one time in their whole life, they're going to have a captive audience. And that means nobody interrupts them, nobody goes anywhere. And so in that sense, they do get this opportunity, this privilege to express whatever they want to and create the impression that they would prefer that people have of them than, as I like to say, just what they look like walking down the hall. If you say to yourself, hey, I'm not doing it for me, I'm doing it for the people. I'm, the people that hear this, hopefully it will benefit from it. So if you take that aspect, it gets rid of a lot of your fear. See, that's the thing about the junior speech, is the subject matter didn't really matter. I think the process, but also the result. You're the expert on that topic. Nobody else in that room knows more, more about that topic than you do at that very point in time. And so I think for me, that gave me a lot of confidence. Want to hear more? Yeah, you do. <laughs> One of the hottest Students new technologies are this year hugely rewarded uh, by feeling themselves getting up in front of their peers, talking about something authentic, talking about something that means something to them, whatever the topic may be. Um, it's, it's as though the audience knows it when they see it, and the speaker feels it when they're doing it. In my opinion, the junior speeches are the best thing we do for the sense of community at the school, at least particularly in the upper school. As, you know, as teachers, as administrators, we're talking to the kids a lot about things such as character, how to handle yourself, how to overcome struggles. The kids hear that from other kids during the junior speeches. And those lessons about the things that we value at the school are so much better coming from the students than they are coming from the adults. If I wanted to show people what 
uh, the academy is all about. I'd ask them to come on a Thursday and sit in on the speeches and uh, watch the reception that followed after that. I think it's, it's, a, it's a longest standing tradition because you're just allowed to be you, you know? I mean, we go to class every day, we have all these rules and regimens, but this is something that you are in control of and you know, it's your own personal project. It's a rite of passage for the school that uh, does fit so much with that sense of community we talked about that, that the boys and girls want to go through it, even though it may be a bit intimidating, even though it may be a challenge. Uh, when they're on the other side of that process, they have done something that bonds them to the other students that have done it and, and to the alumni. So it, it's a great link from one generation of our school to another and, and that tradition is, is almost irreplaceable. It is a celebration of uh, the best of what the Academy can offer. It is at one moment a a celebration of the individual and her, his or her gifts at the same time that it, uh, it fulfills and celebrates the Academy. Here at Academy, I, I believe that this is the single best thing we do. And year after year, you ask anybody, most people would say that because it is 100% the student's voice. Mafia, Cosa Nostra, The Mob, these are all names for an organization that began. It's funny how you do remember the first line. The English sense of humor is one of a wacky nature. Seinfeld, Friends, and Frasier, they were last week's three highest rated comedic television programs. Hundreds of thousands of citizens filed past the blue gray coffin. Uh, my junior speech topic was on uh, our safari to Africa. Rockets, liquid fueled, and solid fuel. My misadventures as a child. Franklin Roosevelt's first inaugural address. A sailing adventure. The perils of the block party. Pierre Lachaise Cemetery in Paris. The Russian invasion of Czechoslovakia in the spring of 1967 little videos that my friend Bob Turton and my brother Kyle and I made. Growing up with a returned sibling. Zen Buddhism. Cryogenics. My sister. Procrastination. Stereos. Bob Marley. Alice Cooper. Remember Alice Cooper? Changing mindsets based on the works of Carol Dweck. Overcoming fear. A shooting at City Center that I witnessed. Vanguard won't scream. 